So this is where it all started for Scottish Premier League star Lyndon Dykes. Lyndon was a student at Ravenna High School, was a part of our Futsal and Football Academy and has now gone on to play in the biggest league in Scotland. He's on the verge of playing for Australia and the Socceroos and it all began here. Lyndon was inducted into our Hall of Fame in the inaugural uh, group that came through four years ago and he's done an amazing effort over the years. We're very proud of him and here is his story now. So, think back to when you were at Rabina High School, what do you remember about your days at Rabina High? I think it was one of the best times, when you look back and you're not in that moment, it's one of the best times you have. Yeah. Um, obviously, it's it's the easy life. Young kids now, they, they hate school and stuff, but wait, when you come out to the big the big world, it's, uh, it's much different. <laughs> but, um, yeah, looking back on it, I always look positive. I think um, it helped me a lot, really, with my football as well. Because with, without uh, Morrison there, with doing the futsal, I was doing was playing football nearly every single day, and that was a major factor. And um, I think what they've got at the school is really amazing. And um, with the sports, with baseball and uh, golf, and I'm always checking up. I think I think it's really good. And um, no, I really enjoy it. Made a lot of friends. I met a lot of great teachers like yourself. So. Um, <laughs> Yeah, uh, 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 yeah, I really enjoyed it. That's good. And you still stay in touch with a few people from that you went to school with. Yeah, I, I stay in touch with a, with a few. Um, I, obviously, I live with Tolga, who's a year above me, but he's school captain. Mm. So I keep in touch with him, and obviously, I keep in touch a lot with um, Morrison a lot. So yeah. yeah, I've always always kept in touch, and um, I'm really glad that I got the chance to go there because I think it helped me out a lot. Oh, that's good. That's really good. And then you got the chance to come back and visit us last year. Um, how was that coming back? Did it seem different? Yeah, it seemed really different when I was uh, since when I was there. Um, but it was really it was really good to go back and see what's what's new and see old faces, see old teachers. So um, it was really exciting. And I think I played futsal for a little bit with the with the few of the kids and Morrison so it was mm. uh, really really enjoyed that so hopefully I can do that again and then um, I think the school as itself is over the years just got better and better yeah oh good that's really good to hear thanks for that um so it was in your last year of high school I think you were named our sportsman of the year but then also named in the Australian team and you toured the UK was that sort of your first step towards where you are now yeah, I did. Yeah, it was a uh, went over that trip with the Australian schoolboys, um, and that was an eye opener for myself. I went through South Coast, went to Queensland, and obviously got an Australia team. So once I seen where we I could be playing and the the, the players that I was playing with, because a lot of them were like youth players at A League and youth players at big clubs, and then um, just seeing that and just obviously travelling over to the UK, um, it helped a lot and. You kind of opened your eyes thinking that this is something that if if you want to pursue you should put your head down and be 100 percent to try and do it so um i was really at the time really happy that i made that squad that was a big achievement at the time for myself and then um, yeah i think obviously morrison as well helped me a lot with that because he always he's always pushing me harder at school yeah and uh a lot of the teachers helped me out a lot as well so yeah yeah oh. that was that was definitely something that helped that's good. And was there a time when you sort of went, hang on, I could actually make it here as a professional footballer? Was there a moment or did it just gradually come on over time? Um, for myself, it was more the fact that I had to try and get out my comfort zone and push myself a lot harder than I did. Yeah, uh, There was a lot of people that telling me that I could do this and do that and I kind of just got stuck in a little rut with myself and... Um, Obviously, I was I was playing with good players and playing with, and I, like I said, went overseas with the Australian team and then came back to the Gold Coast. And I just kind of hit a point where I thought I got the chance to come back to Scotland and play with Queens and just thought to myself, this isn't something that I can't say no to. This is something, if I'm looking back in years to come, saying, oh my God, like, why didn't I do that? Or I could have been this. So it was literally one day that just 
flipped on my head and I said, no, this is something that I really want to try and do in my head and uh, work hard and put all my all in it. And I'm really glad that I've done that because um, it's work, working out great at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. So you had three years at Queen of the South, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. How, was, so. how was that experience? Yeah, it was amazing. Obviously, they, were, they gave me a chance and um, the first season when I came over, I was, uh, I don't know, I was a little bit young, younger in the squad anyways and I'm just coming over here thinking I need to try and do my best, try and get in the team and try and learn off other boys because it was my first professional experience training full-time and um, you think you're fit but once you come into that environment, you need to get a lot more fitter and yeah. uh, sharpness, etc. So, um, yeah, at the start I was excited but I just thought I'm going to bed my way in here and I got a bit lucky in pre-season we didn't have any wingers at the time so I, they, they put me on the wing one game and I eventually I literally played them on the wing nearly the whole season so that that helped me a lot and then once I kind of got the sniff I just didn't really look back and I didn't let anyone really take my position and yeah. um, I just try to learn as much as I can and I'm always a believer that you're only as good as your last game so um yeah, I just once I got that opportunity, uh, I just tried my best to stay and learn as much as I can. And did the Scots give you a hard time about your Aussie accent? Yeah, at the start they did. Uh, <laughs> obviously, they were laughing and giving yeah. me jokes and <laughs> all that stuff. So, but it was kind of good for myself because obviously I'm I'm a bit quiet, um, a bit quiet sometimes. So. Yeah that kind of breaks the barrier a little bit and brings out the jokes and stuff yeah. like that. So yeah. it's always a good start. <laughs> yeah, no, that's good. That's good. So then I suppose after a good few good seasons with Queens, you then had clubs coming to you. How was that to know that other clubs wanted you a part of their list? Yeah, it was exciting. Obviously, um, once... I got into the groove of things at Queens and once I put my head down and thought this is something that I really need to do for my career and push 110%, I thought I want to play at the best level I can and try and get as high as I can. Um, so when it come to the point near the end of my contract, there was a few teams um, coming in, like you said, and a few teams that I had the choice of. And then I, I, I got an agent, obviously, and I met up with a few had a few options here and there and that's when I met Livingston and had a meeting with them and um, straight away I got a good good vibe Yeah. and then the rest is history as, as it speaks now. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you've had a fantastic season. We could nearly go through it game by game but that would take hours. Tell yeah. what what's the biggest game you've had this season for you? For myself, I think obviously when we beat Celtic 2-0 at home, mm. Just for the, it was Livingston's first ever win against Celtic. Wow! And then we won, we won two nil. So and obviously I, I scored the second goal to go two nil. And I think after that game, my phone was going nuts with <laughs> press, and I had agents ringing me, and yeah, and just just the the press kind of coming up from the championship because there's not much press in the championship as much. And then I was getting people noticing me more, even in Australia, even though I was all the way over in Scotland, and people saw, people noticing me over here saying, oh, who's this kid coming up from a different league? And, mm -hmm. and so, yeah, that, that game definitely will be will be uh, stuck in my head for yeah. this, this season so far. Um, yeah, coronavirus yeah, no for you. No how's, the, how's it affecting you as a professional athlete? Yeah, it's really crazy. Obviously, um, it's such a worldwide thing, I think. In Australia, it's a it's not as severe over here being in Europe, but um, our seasons obviously stopped for a while now. I think this is my fifth or coming into my sixth week of lockdown with the family. So um, yeah, it's, it, it came at a bad point as well, just in the international um, in my in my career, and we were doing really well for the team as well. So it was. Uh, not good timing, but it's something that you can't do. Uh, you can't help, really. No. And are you able to stay fit and still train a bit? Yeah, well, we have a schedule with the, with the Livingston, so 
Um, at the moment, I'm running on a Monday and a Wednesday. We do um, 6K on a Monday, Wednesday. We have certain times we have to get, and then a 12K on a Friday. And then, obviously, we have some gym sessions on a Tuesday and Thursday. Just, um, just obviously, they put in some videos that we have to do and just kind of a personal note. And, obviously, I'm going out bike riding and I've yeah. got a little gym set up in the house. So, just just trying to do the best I can, really. Yeah, absolutely. I oh, know. Sounds like you yeah, you are doing the best you can, though. That's really good. Um, coming into winter now over Scotland, how have you adjusted from Gold Coast weather to Scottish weather over the last few years? Yeah, at the start, obviously, it was hard. Obviously, Gold Coast is always roasting hot, yeah. pretty much. And uh, coming over here, it's that snowing and hail. Uh, but, uh, no, I'm, I've adjusted now. I've lost my tan. <laughs> so... Um, <laughs> No, I've adjusted, I'm adjusted quite well now and I'm just used to it, but um, it's definitely hard some training sessions when you're going out and it's uh, raining really heavy or it's really cold, but you just got to get on with it. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. So do you get, you've probably had a chance in the last couple of weeks to reflect a little bit on your career so far, but I also get the feeling that you're always looking what's next rather than what I've done so far. Would that be right? You're always trying to move forward. Yeah, yeah. I guess you could say I'm kind of like that. Mm. Um, obviously, I do look back and I think a lot of great things that I've done. And I, I, sometimes I sit there with my with my wife and I'm like, "Wow, like this this is kind of crazy. I've yeah. done that." But I'm kind of just that person um, that I want to try and be the best I can and get to the highest place I can. So I just try and look forward and I just try and uh, push myself mm. and. Then I can look back at my, my career when I'm old and yeah. I can't move and say, yeah. oh, that was a good career. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I uh, love it. I love it. So hopefully you're up and running soon. Um, we don't know, do we? But um, what are your goals just for the next, let's say, if this season gets underway again? Do you have goals for the rest of the season? Yeah, I always kind of set goals before each season or game or periods of certain time so and for this season my first season the Premier League I actually set a goal for myself to hit, to hit double figures uh, in goals for the for the season and like you said we're not finished yet but I've, I've, I have I've, I'm past that I think I'm on 12 goals so yeah and I'm really happy with that but if the season does kick off I think um, we were pushing for that fourth place in the league and um, that was something that we were that I was aiming for and uh, it was something that I was working really hard for but like like you said if the season starts or it doesn't if it doesn't start well I'm happy with the season how it went and yeah. um, but um, there's always improvements so yeah, yeah yeah for sure and you've had the chance to talk to the Australian team about the future is that correct yeah, so they came and watched me against um, Celtic not long ago, the second game we drew 2-2. Yeah. Um, they came and watched that game, and the next day I met up with the assistant coach, Rene, and we had a good chat, um, and they were lovely guys. As, as, uh, so, as as it stands, I um, have to wait and see to the future when... Yeah, the football starts back up and the international thing. But um, as it's looking, it's looking promising for international yeah. football. So um, there's not much a... I can really say about it. But nah, no, nah, but it's a, yeah, it'd be amazing. It's a dream, it? So obviously, it'd be amazing. Yeah, like you said, yeah. Yeah, no, nah, absolutely. That'd be that'd be so so good. Um, so yeah, it's all a little bit wait and see for now, but. Um, one last message, I suppose. What do you think is the key to success? Oh, it's a hard one. Yeah. Um, I think the key to success is to be a hundred percent committed to something that you're trying to make it in. When I'm saying that, I think like. I haven't really played professional football as long as other people, but when you see players playing at a high level, sometimes people say, oh, how are they How are they there with their ability? Or why isn't this person here? But if you look off the park or if you look how fit they are or if you look how hard they train, 
sometimes that looks that looks better to managers, to the fans, and to players that the dedication that he's putting in mm. is better than someone who's coming in only given half of it but has a better talent. Yeah. So that's something that I kind of look at like that. Yeah. Um, and I think, of course, you need to have good people around you to push you on. Um, and you have to be strong when you do you make mistakes and you do get knockbacks. So you just get past that. You just try and get stronger. And um, yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I think that's the key too. That's really good. Well, look, for someone who is this young teenage kid on the Gold Coast at Rabina High to playing in the Premier League in Scotland, well done so far. But hopefully you've got many more years ahead of you. The um, virus moves on pretty quick and, and you can get back to playing football. Yeah, definitely. I think it's been about five weeks and it feels about five years. So, um, <laughs> absolutely. No, yeah, I, I, I got a bit lucky, but um, I think, like you said, I think being at Rabino is um, is crazy when you look back and you think where you've come from. And I'm lucky that I had teachers like you and Morrison and that give yeah. me a little kick up <laughs> sometimes, trying to <laughs> push me on. So um, no, nah, it's really good. All right, no worries. All right, well, thanks for that, mate. It was really good to speak to you. No worries, mate. Uh, it was a pleasure.